This, I mean, he's a very nice man. I don't know if you've ever met him or not, but he is. He's a very, very nice man. Um, he tells people he's going to do one thing, and he does another. He told people that he was going to vote against Obamacare, and not only did he vote for it, but when Nancy Pelosi got to him and told him that not only are you going to go vote for it, you're going to go, I think it was to Tennessee, because we have another Democrat who was also going to vote against it, and we need you to persuade them, because we're just a couple votes away, and we've got to pass this. You want to be a leader? You want to be involved in leadership? Go get that vote. So he voted for Obamacare. And after telling people that he would not, he also voted for the economic stimulus package, and he voted to increase America's debt twice. Over two, $2 trillion dollars, I mean, about Obamacare is, my husband has cancer. And when he was first diagnosed about seven years ago, we went to Hopkins. We found the best. I'm friends with Senator Harris, or now Congressman Harris, who was a doctor at Hopkins. And he told us who the best was. And we got an appointment with the best. And we thought we had it licked. And then two years ago, it came back. And, you know, under Obamacare, would we be able to choose the best? Would we be able to go to the Hopkins of this world? I don't think so. And then I'm hearing about little old ladies who might break their hips. And rather than go and get surgery on their broken hip, they're going to have them undergo physical therapy for six weeks first? How does that work? Not well. And it's not right. And young people, we're going to force young people to buy insurance? How can, how can a country force its people to buy a certain product? And you know, young people, I remember when we were young, it was a while ago, but I remember, and we didn't need the insurance that we need today. They don't need the insurance, the catastrophic. They don't need to pay. One thing I, I feel like strongly about, about, I'm very pro-business. I've got one of the highest ratings in Annapolis with uh, the Maryland Business for Responsible Government. And I've owned a business. Uh, my husband currently owns a business. We did a business together. And, you know, that's part of the problem, I believe, in politics. You don't have people in office who have run businesses, who know what it means to meet the bottom line. They work for government. They're lobbyists. It's not their money. It's your money. But they don't care because it's not their money. And they just, they just do not get it. And I believe we need to reform the tax structure. We need a very simple tax structure that's fair. When we started our business back in 1974, we went through the Small Business Administration, the SBA, and that's how we got started. The biggest thing we need to do is we need, as a government, to get out of the way. Out of the way of business and let business do its job. And that's creating jobs. That's employing people. All we do is put more obstruction in their way with regulations. I sit on a committee in Annapolis. It's called the AELR committee. We, do the, we, get, we review the regulations. Every month we get a stack of new regulations about like this. And the businesses don't even know anything about what they're about to do to them. And we were reading them one month. And I noticed, my staff noticed, that there was this regulation that was going to affect all the watercraft rental agencies in Ocean City. It was going to ban any personal watercraft. And they named all these tributaries. Well, we looked at the map. It was all the tributaries going into the bay and the ocean. It was putting about six businesses out of business. And these guys had no idea. So we started calling them to let them know, and they raised cane, and they put it off, and they put it off. They're still trying, but one thing that that said to me was, we have got to do away with these business regulations, and if we can't get the government to do away, well, I understand it, so Malley says he wants to. Never has, but he doesn't want to enough. 
So we passed a bill. I worked with a Democrat from Baltimore City, Senator Ferguson, nice young man. We passed a bill. It's on transparency. It states that any regulations that are going before the General Assembly must be posted on the website of the agency where the business people can click on it and see all the regulations that could affect their business. But no, they don't want to do that. They, they charge people $800 a year to buy this registry, to be on the registry, so they can look at how they're going to get killed. <laughs> and so we were able to pass the bill at no cost to people, so they have to display the new regulations on the state websites so, so they can find them. His gambling bill didn't pass. Mm. And we had so much fun. <laughs> About 11.20, on the last night of session, I can't remember which one of his things, was it the flush tank? One of them came up. And we decided we're going to talk a lot. And we talked, and we talked, and we talked. And they finally got, they drew up this petition to end the debate. And they gave us 20 minutes. Oh, it was the plan Maryland. They gave us 20 minutes and the proponents 20 minutes. Well, I don't know if you might have heard, some of you might have heard me say this before, but we met some really smart senators on our side. Joe Getty said, okay, you know the Democrats are not going to stand up. They've been instructed, don't stand up and argue for the bill. They've got a couple of stupid ones that do anyway, because they, we goad them into it and they can't stand it, and they get up and we're just smiling. So it is, it is so funny. Joe says, all right, when we're done, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to speak in favor of the bill. And it was, it was very funny. And you can hear rumblings around the room. And it's like they're looking at each other going, what do we do? <laughs> and Senator Jamie Raskin, who's our constitutional attorney, goes running up to the podium to Mike Miller. Several of them do. And they're reading through the rule books. And Joe, Senator Getty, was prepared to vote for it. If we could stop it, he'd vote for it if it came down to it. Just to be able to extend the debate and not pass things. And they figured out something, and they were able to shut us down about 20 minutes at 12, or a quarter of 12. I've never seen anything like this in my life. All of us Republicans are sitting here looking at each other and just going, this is great. Because if you think about it, I know they like to call it a doomsday budget. I'm sorry, when O'Malley came into office, the budget was $27 billion. This year, it's 35, between 35 and 36. It's a billion over what it was last year. That's not doomsday, folks. Right. Doomsday would be if we took two or three billions out. But everybody's screaming because they didn't get the increase that they thought they were going to get. They're still getting more than they did last year, but we cut their increase. <laughs> we say, leave it the way it is for a year. Let people see that they can live within. Well, it's even better than our means. We don't need to go back and do this. It costs twenty some thousand dollars a day to put us in Annapolis. And now they're going to do it twice? Because the mics can't decide on gambling? So they know they can't get their act together? Because they have to do the budget, because the counties are doing their budgets, and we have to do the budget so the counties know what to do with their budgets. So we're going to have two sessions. Give me a break. This is just ludicrous. So I think we should ditch a lot of people. <laughs> but right now, I'm trying to ditch Dutch. And I hope I can persuade you all to help me in that. Because we have a shot. I really hope that you all will support me and you will help me. You don't have to be in my district to do that. I'm unknown to many people in Howard County. And we've got to get my name out. We need to get signs. So you have friends that may be in my district. 
and I would like to solicit your help in getting my name out and helping us with volunteers and walking neighborhoods. Joe has a sign-up sheet over there.